Introducing the Duopod, a 6U DIY mod for two 4MS pods. I've had a few comments asking about the case that I use, so this video will serve as an overview to the case design itself, as well as an assembly guide for building one. This design aims to provide a compact, ergonomic, and portable Eurorack system that is based on the powered pod cases from 4MS. Basing the system on the pod allowed for an upgrade path that didn't require changing cases. I was able to begin exploring Eurorack with a single pod, and then add a second one whenever I needed the additional space. I was also inspired by other cases, which position the bottom row of modules at a slight angle. This feature feels more ergonomic and is useful for performance control modules, which receive lots of perpendicular force from the user. Because more of this force is directed downward into the table surface, the interactions feel more solid and dependable. The angled control surfaces also permit the use of shorter patch cables by bringing the modules closer together physically. And in cases where a longer cable is needed, excess length can be passed between or behind the cases to help keep things tidy. I also wanted the ability to collapse the case when not in use to allow for some portability. While many cases are designed for portability first, most resemble flight cases with ruggedized exteriors, which is a bit bulkier of a design than I wanted. I took inspiration from the Arturia Rack Brute cases, and created a hinged design, which repurposes the stand in the back as a carrying handle when the system is folded. This toolbox storage state allows for some portability, as well as some protection, all while keeping the footprint small. Small notching in the hinges allows the cases to fold out while keeping the upper row vertical, and fold in while preventing the modules from crashing into each other. This protects the knobs on the modules when in transit and keeps the top row stable while performing. Finally, I wanted a more convenient way to manage the power supply for the pod, as well as the ability to switch power on and off without having to unplug the system every time. I was able to reuse the handle and stand assembly to accommodate these features by adding in a storage space and cable management area for the power supply in the handle. The addition of power controls is achieved through a conveniently located illuminated push button on the side of the stand. Many of the components here have been 3D printed out of PETG and PLA. Some parts also have threaded inserts embedded in them to help fasten them together. I have skipped the process of printing and finishing these parts here, but if you'd like to make one for yourself, I've uploaded all of the files to printables, and I've created a complete bill of materials. Link to both of those in the description. Assembly starts by clipping the hinge arms onto the side of each pod, making sure that the correct set is attached to the correct pod. The top and bottom hinges are slightly different. Note that the upper pod is assembled with the modules in the opposite direction from the bottom, so that both sets of power inputs are facing toward the hinge assembly. Next, the stand is assembled by fastening the handle to each side. Optionally, power distribution and switching can be added at this time. Note that this requires some basic electronics knowledge and soldering skills. Essentially, this is just a basic inline switch with one power input and two power outputs. Then the power supply is inserted, the cable is threaded through the handle, and if installed, connected to the power switch. You can also use some Velcro straps to hold down the power supply and keep the cables tidy on the other side. Finally, a quarter 20 threaded rod is pushed through one side of the hinge assembly, through one or more spacer pieces, and then through the other side of the hinge. Once the threaded rod is in place, two decorative washers and thumb nuts are used to apply some clamping pressure onto the hinge and keep the pieces moving smoothly. At this point, power can be hooked up to the pods using the power supply directly or through the power switch that I mentioned earlier. I also added a small cap to the illuminated switch to limit how much light was emitted. Since the case is 3D printed, there's lots of room for customization. The location of the power inlet and power buttons could easily be flipped by mirroring the respective parts. The power switch is completely optional and can be omitted if you so desire. Parts can also be printed in different colors or materials, or with multiple colors like I've done with the spacer on the threaded rod here. At this point, it is worth mentioning that I am by no means a professional industrial designer or electrical engineer, and that this was solely a personal project. While I'm happy to share the results and processes with anyone, 
None of this has been rigorously tested to any extent and should be treated as a concept. I'm also using the US 45 watt power brick for the pod. Other power ratings or supplies may not be the same size and may not fit this case design without adjustments. In the future, there are some additional features I would like to develop if I have time. First, adding at least a passive molt to the spacer on the threaded rod would be a nice way to distribute clock or LFO signals around the system without taking up any additional HP or having to resort to inline molts. More ambitiously, I had also considered adding a 1U row around the threaded rod, though this would require some way to get power into the 1U strip using the pod power supply. Second, I need to continue to refine and improve the handle. This was by far the most difficult part of the case to get working at an acceptable level. Ideally, there would be no flex at all on this assembly, but between the inherently flexy plastic materials and the constraints in how much I could print at a time, I think this is as good as I'm going to get for a while with the printed parts. I had also considered a custom sheet metal part to fix this, but the added cost would be significant when compared to the 3D printed version. You could try 3D printing the entire handle assembly in one go, instead of fastening these pieces together to get a better result, if your printer can fit all of the parts. Finally, I want to sew a more protective soft case to fit around the entire system when it's in the stored state. This will allow for more protection where it may be dusty or rainy outside. I hope that you find this case design as interesting as I do. If you're interested in building one yourself, check out the links in the description for the bill of materials as well as the 3D models. Thanks for watching.